Hi guys, welcome to Gandhi, The Decolonization of British India, Coin Volume 9 by Bruce Mansfield. I'm Scott Mansfield, along with developer Jason Carr. We make up the Gandhi design team. I'm going to run you guys through some of the non-player actions using Gandhi's non-player system, which we call Arjuna, and the short scenario setup. Just a quick note on the short scenario setup. The picture on page 41 indicates a Muslim League base placed in Punjab that the text does not indicate. The base should be placed there at the start of the short scenario, so if you do play it, don't forget to place that base. The short scenario is a, great, is a great place to start because it gets you right in the heart of the action very quickly. It begins in 1930 rather than 1917 and has a lot of pieces out and already has some protests and some unrest and Gandhi is in the south in Bombay presidency. A little note on the, on the Arjuna system that it will follow, it does follow human rules. So it will possibly take an operation only or a limited operation. One of the key differences is the non-player Raj and the non-player revolutionaries do not track resources. Instead, their operations are limited by what we call an activation number located in the top right corner of the Arjuna cards. And we'll get into how that works in a little bit. Well, let's jump right into it. The first eligible is the British Raj. So we bring up our non-player aid card and we look at this NP eligibility table uh, chart right on the, t on the front here. And it, uh, on this box, we're only gonna deal with the first eligible on the top because they're first eligible. The bottom part deals if they were second eligible. And we work line by line, seeing which criteria matches. So in this case, the current event is critical and effective. If that's true, then the British Raj will take the event. A critical event will be visually indicated on the event card by an underline under the faction symbol. For the British Raj and the, non and the, and the, and the revolutionaries, it will be underlined by a rifle. For the nonviolent factions, it will be underlined by an arrow. So the event has to be critical and it has to be effective. An effective event is one that matches any of the criteria in the effective table down here for each individual faction. If it matches both those, then the first up will take the event. Well, a quick look at the event shows that it's not critical because it's not underlined. So we move on to the next, the next question, which is, could the next eligible choose a critical event? The next eligible is the revolutionaries. And a quick look shows that's not a critical event. It's trying to decide whether or not it's gonna block the next player's event. Okay, the next question is, will be first eligible on an upcoming critical event? So a quick look at the, at the, at the next event shows that that too is not a critical event for anybody. So we move on to the fourth, which is otherwise choose an operation plus special activity, which is exactly what the British Raj are gonna do, which brings up our Arjuna deck. So the first thing you wanna do when you bring up your Arjuna deck is you wanna shuffle the top card no matter what faction it is, even if it matches the faction that you're playing. You wanna shuffle that top card to the bottom. That way it doesn't give the human player any extra information. And you keep shuffling the cards until you come to the faction that you're dealing with. So in this case, it's the letter A, Raj's card, okay. The first thing you wanna do when you bring up your card is you wanna answer these board state questions, the, the questions in the blue box, either in the affirmative or in the negative. If you answer in the affirmative, you just continue down the left side, either answering the next question or until you get to the operation or special activity. If you answer in the negative, you just follow these icons on either shuffle the card to the back of the deck or flip that card to its reverse and do the operation and special activity on the back of the card. So this first question is asking us to roll a die and is that less than or equal to available troops? There's four available troops and I wanna do this operation with you guys. So let's just say that we rolled a two. So that's in the affirmative. When we go down to the next, next box with access to see if there's any cubes that exceed all active non-base adversaries in any spaces. Well, we know bases are active, but it tells us to ignore those. So let's ignore those. And all we're looking for is active adversaries. And that's any non-cube flipped piece. So the activists are, or activists are flipped, they're active. If the revolutionaries are flipped, they're active. And a quick glance at the board shows us two spaces, Bombay Presidency and Punjab. Do cubes exceed active adversaries, non-base active adversaries in either of those two spaces? They do not down south, but they do up north. They have four cubes there to the two active adversaries there. So that's true. So we move down to the assault operation. The first line of the assault operation is a red, a red, sorry, a red check mark followed by a red, uh, some red text. That red text is also a question. If you answer that question yes, then you perform the black text beyond it. If you answer no, then you move on to the next um, priority. So this is asking us to see is Wavell Viceroy down here. Wavell is not Viceroy, Lord Mountbatten is Viceroy. So we ignore that line and we move on to the next line which is select spaces using remove. And remove is bold. And this is where, where Arjuna gets very creative. The bold words on these cards correspond to the columns within the selection tables here. Here's the columns um, for, for the British Raj. It's asking us to look at the remove column, which is right here. 
So we're gonna select a space using that column and we're gonna ignore all this other stuff. And within that column, we're only gonna deal with the red dots. And the red dots are priorities. They're nested priorities and we're gonna answer as many as we can until we get to a single space that they're gonna do a, the assault operation in. That's all these tables do. They're just trying, they're just, they limit the spaces until you find the single space that you can do the operation in. After we find that space, we're gonna do the operation there. Then we're gonna go back, roll an activation number, which I'll explain how that works in a second. And then we're gonna do the operate, possibly do the operation again. Okay, so under the remove column, it's asking us to find a space first with no Raj control. Well, we know we can only do assault in Bombay Presidency and Punjab. So do either of those have no Raj control? And a quick look shows us that Bombay Presidency does not have control. So we put a, a pawn there, super, super fast. Okay, now we're gonna do assault. Now, a little note on Arjuna, it will not show you or, or tell you how to do the operations and special activities. It's up to you to know how the operations and special activities actually work. So I recommend before you jump into Arjuna, if you haven't played Gandhi before, I would run through the multiplayer game, even if you're doing it solo, just to get a better feel for the operations. Okay. So we're going to do Assault and Bombay Presidency, and the procedure is remove one active piece for every two cubes, if troops are present, for every cube. Well, troops are not present, we can only remove one piece, and there's three active pieces there, so which one are we gonna remove first? If you bring up the non-player aid card at the, on the right-hand side at the bottom is this adversary priorities box, and that applies to all the factions. And we just go through in priority order by number until we get to the one that applies. In this case, Gandhi is listed as the fifth priority, and the activists are listed as the eighth priority. So Gandhi's gonna be the first to be arrested. And since we can only arrest one piece, they're only gonna arrest Gandhi. When that happens, there's a little note here on the bottom of the British Raj multiplayer PAC. It, it tells you, it lets you remember that, that when Ghani is arrested, at the end of the, of the British Raj turn, restraint will be reduced by one, and Congress has the ability then, if they want to, to place available protests not to two cities, provinces, or states that don't already have a protest. Pretty powerful. Okay, so they arrested Ghani, and we'll make sure we do that at the end of the Raj's turn. Okay, now we're going to deal with our activation number. For the British Raj, they can always do the operation with troops to its maximum extent. In fact, they have to. The activation number is only whether or not you're going to use sepoys. Okay, and the activation number for the British Raj is always going to be R, or restraint. Okay, it's going to be equal to or less than restraint. And what that means is you're going to roll a die, and if you equal or less than restraint, the number of restraint, then sepoys can no longer do the operation. If you roll greater than restraint, sepoys can continue to do the operation, and we'll do that again and again until we either run out of spaces to do the operation or we fail the activation roll. So let's go ahead and roll a die. Okay, we rolled a three, which is uh, equal to or less than restraint. So sepoys can no longer do that operation. Only troops can do the operation. And we're still doing assault. We're not gonna go and find another operation. We still are doing assault. Well, the only other place we found out earlier to do assault is Punjab. There's no reason to go back through the selection tables here because we know it's gonna be Punjab. So they're gonna do assault in Punjab. And assault is, and then we can't use sepoys, we can only use that single cube. So within that single cube, it can, re it can ar arrest one of those two pieces, either the Congress activist or the Muslim League piece. If you bring up your, the adversary priorities table, you'll see in priority order, faction player, or uh, player faction, that'd be me, a human player, comes first before uh, most common piece, the activist. So let's just say that the non-player is playing everybody, so it's gonna be random between one of those two. And we'll just roll a die and we'll do even for Congress. So it's odd, so Muslim League piece is gonna be arrested. Okay. So that's it, for, uh, that's it for assault. There's no other places that we can do assault in. So let's bring up the Arjuna card again and see what special activity we're gonna do. There's two special activities here listed. There's govern under A and there's martial law under B. So A is priority. We're gonna see if we can do govern first. If we can, we're gonna do that and we're gonna ignore all of the martial law. And within the govern, there's two other priorities. First, it's gonna to wanna to do imperialism. If it can't do imperialism anywhere, it's gonna to wanna to remove adversaries. Well, a quick look at the board shows that there's imperialism that can happen in a lot of spaces. And unlike during campaign rounds, imperialism during the, during the turns can, can happen anywhere that there's cubes and no active adversaries. So we're gonna do imperialism. And it's asking you to do imperialism up to a die roll, total shifts and markers removed using shift to support. It sounds, it sounds more complicated than it really is. So all it's asking you to do is roll a die, in this case, a one. Now. Let's just say we roll a four, because that's, that's a more fun. It will give us more ability to show you, show how this thing works. Okay, so we can do, four, we can do a total shift of four 
uh, for imperialism across the entire map. And what that means is we have four points uh, of imperialism to use. Since there's no resources, we're not going to spend resources to do imperialism. We're going to spend die roll um, pips. Okay. Now, it's asking you to, to govern. And like I said earlier, Arjuna does not cheat. It's going to follow all the rules uh, for, for govern. So we can govern a max two spaces. And within govern, uh, under the letter C, you can see how the imperialism can only buy imperialism for up to two levels. So it can only do imperialism for up to two levels and only in two spaces. But we have four to play with. So if a space has unrest, it will remove that unrest for one point, and then it will start to shift the space. Or if it has multiple unrest, it will, it will continue to move unrest off that space. And it's asking you to do that. It's asking you to buy imperialism using the shift to support. Okay. And again, that shift to support is bold. So we're going to look under the space selection table here, under that shift to support, which is the first column. And we're going to, again, we're going to ignore all these other tables. And we're just going to use the shift to support and just the red dots within the shift to support. Okay, so we're looking for two, two pop spaces, which there are a lot of. So let's continue down to see if we can narrow that down. No protest. Okay, well, that cancels that Bombay presidency and Punjab. And we're looking for uh, unrest, which brings up East Bengal. That's the only other place for unrest. But it can't do imperialism there because that base is active, and it cannot buy imperialism in, in spaces with active adversaries. Most opposition. Well, the only, only spaces there are two population and most opposition are United Provinces and Bihar. And again, if you look over here at United Provinces, that revolutionary base blocks that space for imperialism. So Bihar is the only place that it can do imperialism. We have four points because we rolled that four. So we have four points of imperialism to do in Bihar, but we can only do a maximum of two. So we'll use one point to take away the passive opposition, which reduces Congress's total opposition from nine down to seven. And we'll use another point of that four to go to, to passive support, which is going to increase the Raj's victory condition from 28 to 30. Now that's as much as we can do in Bihar, because again, they cannot go beyond what the human player can do. Okay, so now we're going to find the second space is going to govern because government can be in two spaces. And again, we go back to the shift of support column and we work down dot by dot until we find the single space. Again, two pop. We can ignore the no protest and unrest because we know we can't deal with those. Most opposition, we already dealt with the most opposition space, so we ignore that. So now we're looking, the next, the next criteria is neutral. Well, there's two neutral spaces that are two population. There's Madras Presidency and West Bengal. And the next parameter is the Muslim state. Neither of those are Muslim states, and so the very last one is a random space. So we're going to choose randomly between West Bengal and Madras Presidency. So let's go ahead and put, let's go ahead and do even for West Bengal and odd for Madras Presidency. And we roll the five. So it's going to be down here in Madras Presidency. We use two of our initial die roll of four for up here in Bihar. So we have two shifts to do down here in Madras Presidency. If we had rolled a five, we would be left with three shifts. But like I keep saying, that uh, by imperialism can only be for two levels, so we can only use two of those. Okay. But we rolled a four, so we have two left to do. So we'll go from passive support for one and all the way to active support for our second, which brings uh, the Raja's victory condition from 30 all the way up to 34. Or sorry, not their condition, but their, their counter. Okay, so that ends uh, the British Raja's turn. And because we arrested Gandhi, we can now place a uh, protest. The first thing we want to do is we shift restraint minus one. And again, if you forget, it's, just, it's down here in the notes box at the bottom of the multiplayer British Raj PAC. So now we have four protests available, but we can only place two of those. And one of the good things that Bruce did with Arjuna is the language is very specific. And so if it asks you to place protests, all you have to do is go here to, if you're dealing with MB, the non-player Congress, there's a place protest column, and that's all you're going to deal with. Again, you ignore all this except for the dots in place protests. So the first space is going to be not an active opposition. So let's take a protest down here, and let's see where we're going to go with that. Okay, so the first place is going to be not an active opposition. Well, there's no spaces that have active opposition at the moment. So we'll go down to the next parameter, which is two pop. So now we're looking just at two pop spaces. Well, there's lots of two pop spaces. Okay. The next is going to be a non-Muslim space. Uh, the the non-player Congress does not want to place protests in a Muslim space. So that cancels out West Bengal and East Bengal. Okay, now we're looking for unrest. Okay, well, there's no unrest in non-Muslim spaces, so we can ignore that. And now we're looking for... Uh, now, oh, here's, the, here's a good example. There's Raj's player. That's a, that's a red check mark. Well, Raj is not player. Raj is an NP, so we can ignore that. So now... Uh, I'm sorry. Ignore that anyway, because that was for shift opposition. We're in place protest. Okay, so we're looking for non-Muslim space, 
And at the very end, the last parameter is a random space. We're looking for, what we're looking for is a two pop, non-Muslim random space, okay. Well, there's a couple of those, okay. There's down here, there's Madras Presidency, and there's up here, there's Bihar, and there's United Provinces. It's gonna be between one of those three. Now, which one? We can either do uh, just a die roll of one, two down here, three, four in Bihar, or five, six in United Provinces, or if you wanted to, we can use the random spaces map. Let's use a random spaces map just to show you guys how that works. So the random spaces map is a series of is this is a single die roll. The black die is going to correspond to a general region, and any of the color die will respond to the subregion. I'll show you how that works. So let's go ahead and roll the die. I rolled a, a black two, which is corresponds to this region up here, and a green five. Okay, so we just find the color die. So black two is going to be in this region, and the five is right there, and that's East Bengal. But we know we're trying to find either between Bihar, United Provinces, or Madras Presidency. So we just go all the way up the line from two five to two six, and then we go all the way to three one which is gonna be down here in Delhi. Three, two, which is United Provinces. And so that's how we select United Provinces for that first protest. We'll go in United Provinces. And because we put a protest there, we flip the non-player, I'm sorry, yeah, we flip the, the Congress piece to active. Remember, activists are always active in protest spaces. So that's where we placed the first, the, that's where we placed the first protest. Now we have a second uh, protest to place. But we could go back through the, the, not the random spaces map if we wanted to, but we know it's gonna be between Bihar and Madras presidency. So we just do even odd for this one. We'll do odd for Bihar and, um, and uh, even for Madras presidency. So it's odd. So the last protest will go up here to Bihar and that will also flip that piece there. And because in both those spaces, uh, Raj still exceeds active adversaries, um, they retain control in both those spaces. Okay, so that's it for the for the Raj um, for the Raj non-player and for placing those protests that the Congress got to do because Gandhi was arrested. Okay, the next up is the non-player revolutionaries, and again we bring up the non-player aid card, and we look at the NP eligibility table again and again. And now we're going to deal with the second eligible because revolutionaries are second eligible, and we deal with each criteria and we stop at the one. That's, that corresponds to, to, um, to the board state. So, active faction will be first eligible on upcoming critical event and cannot execute any current critical event. So, are any of the events critical? None of the events are critical, so that we can, we can continue on to the next line, which is first eligible chose options essay and event is effective. Well, the British Raj did indeed choose the operation special activity, so we're gonna see if the event is effective. And what makes the event effective for the MP revolutionaries is down here at the bottom of the um, effective event box for the British revolutionaries is, is does it add unrest or rare revolutionary pieces or does it move guerrillas from out of play or does it remove player support, player opposition or adversary pieces? And if you bring up the event, the shaded portion, which is the one the revolutionaries will usually take, they won't take the shaded event if their faction symbol has a halo around it. If any of the faction symbols have a halo around it, they'll take the unshaded event. The shaded event says move up to three pieces from out of play to any spaces, Raj ineligible through next card. Well, we just saw on the effective event table here that the gorillas from out of play makes it an effective event. So they're gonna choose that event and move three to out of play. There is no event instruction card for Gandhi. Bruce worded all the events in such a way that they correspond when needed to to the various tables here and the various columns. So in this case, it's asking you to place these, these gorilla pieces somewhere on the board. And so, again, these are selection priorities. We're gonna, we're gonna select the space using non-player revolutionary chart here. And because we're placing the gorillas, we go to the place gorillas column and we work down again these nested dot priorities until we find the space that the first gorilla is gonna go to. Okay, the first criteria is revolutionary base without gorillas. All the revolutionary bases have gorillas already, so that's, so we can ignore that line. The second line is unrest without gorillas. Well, both unrest markers have gorillas there, so we can ignore that line. The third is most revolutionary bases. There's two revolutionary bases on the map, one in the United Provinces and one in East Bengal. So it's gonna be in one of those two spaces. The next line says one to two gorillas and no rev base. Okay, well that doesn't apply because we know we're gonna do it in one of those two rev bases. And the next line is two population. Again, okay, they're both two population, so that doesn't narrow that down. And the next line is most gorillas. And here's where we find the difference. East Bengal has two gorillas, two United Provinces, one. So we're gonna place the first gorilla in East Bengal. 
Now we could, if you wanted to, go back to the selection table and go back through all that um, line by line until we, until we get back to one of those two spaces. But we know, because we just ran through it, that it's going to be between those two and the next line is going to be where the most gorillas are, which is East Bengal. So we don't, there's no need to go back through the selection table. We know we'll place those latter two gorillas in East Bengal. Okay. Well, that finishes up some of the non-player actions just to give you guys a little idea of how they run. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you.